All right, everyone, I think we'll just get started. OK, so um, thanks very much for taking some time on your Friday to to come and spend some time with us to go over some render techniques inside Fusion 360. Um, I don't know where you are in the world just now, but I just want to let you know that Scotland is glorious today. Um, I've never seen it sun the sun out so much in the last couple of days. It's so warm. So I'm hoping that wherever you are in the world, it's as beautiful as it is in Scotland. We never get this weather, so I'm soaking up as much as I can as possible. So let's go over some Fusion um, 360 rendering. OK, so um, just before we get started, guys, if anyone on the webinar hasn't met me before, I just want to do a quick introduction. My name is Cheryl Sneddon. Um, I'm an application consultant for Symmetry. Um, I've got one of my colleagues with me today, um, Wazim. Um, if anyone's got any questions at any stage, please feel free to add your questions in and we'll get to them through the webinar. Or if we can't answer them, we'll, we'll go away and get some answers to your questions. So feel free to fire questions through and we'll, we'll pick them up as we can. Um, I mean, the main reason for doing the render stuff, guys, was to give you a bit of background. I know we've been doing a few different um, a few different things with Fusion 360 over the past few weeks, myself and, and Wazim. Um, and the rendering side of stuff um, basically falls into, into Fusion 360 as, as a very nice tool, a very nice finishing tool. Um, and it's also quite easy to pick up as well. So we wanted to just make you aware of the fact that you know, you don't need to be a specialist in rendering to pick up Fusion 360 and have a good go at it yourself. So I'm going to give you a few different examples. Basically, rendering um, is a photorealistic image from a 2D or 3D model. Um, it contains geometry, objects, viewpoints, um, textures, lighting and shading. Uh, this information is obviously things that you might be aware of during your design process. Um, it's the render inside of stuff is it, it's for communication. It's a visual design uh, allowing you to showcase your um, designs to customers, clients um, within design review, give it a real world scenario, put it in its position of where it would would sit in reality and, and also save time um, and save some money as well, save the cost of the project, showcase it in its in its original form um, and also to review it before you begin the prototype creation as well. So it's all part of the design process depending on what type of product you're designing. Um, so if you've got access to the product design and manufacturing collection, it can be quite difficult to pinpoint exactly where you want to go to start rendering. Um, and I'm not I'm not a rendering specialist by any means, but I have done some rendering in Inventor, AutoCAD, and recently, most recently in Fusion 360. Um, obviously, we've got staff that use, like Craig Snell, for instance, our training manager uses um, 3D Studio Max. That is a specific tool for what it does and can be very difficult to learn. But you've got lots of different solutions now within the product design and manufacturing collection. And I really do think that Fusion 360 can give you a rendering effect easier than most of the packages within the collection. I'm not saying it's the best. You'll also notice that VRED design is, is in this slide as well. It's not within the package, but that's a very high end renderer as well. So there's lots of different techniques. But within Fusion 360, you can pick up the techniques for render really quickly um, and start producing something that looks top, top quality. Um, so these are just some of the renders that have been produced by um, people like yourself, like customers to Autodesk, customers to us. Uh, and Autodesk have, have provided a website now for all of your renders. So you can get access to your renders and anyone else's renders as well. They've introduced it um, as the Autodesk gallery. So you can go online and basically you can use your Autodesk ID and log in. You can view your own renders, previous renders that you've done. And you can see other projects that people have been working on as well. And you can chat with them and you can get ideas from them. And you can figure out basically how you can make your product look just as good as some of the images you can see on the screen. So like I say, this is what the, the website actually looks like. You can see things like you can get access to your own renders. You've got access to a gallery 
you've got access to community um, forums and you can you can upload your own renderings into this space as well. It's actually really good for all different types of renders. Um, you should go online, have a look at it, see how it goes. Um, so just to give you a broad spec of what we're going to go over today is um, using the 360 Fusion 360 rendering tools, we're going to import some AnyCAD data, we're going to look at positions, moving and rotating your data, possibly building a scene, um, appearances, scene settings, adding decals, um, in the beginning, how you use the in-canvas rendering settings, and then how we produce a quality render at the end. All right, so let's just jump into Fusion 360. I thought maybe I would just actually show you, apologies if anyone's not used Inventor before, um, but I thought I would just show you the very basic tools inside um, Inventor for render, just as a quick, very, very quick comparison um, of the tools that are inside Inventor and then the ones that are inside Fusion 360. I find it a bit more difficult to use the render tools inside Inventor because, like I say, I'm not a render specialist by any means. But if you want something really quick from Inventor, um, you can use just the view tools to change your visualization style to realistic and place on some shadows. Uh, you can you can pick ground shadows, object shadows, ambient shadows. You've also got your ground plane where you can go on and put the ground plane on and you can change colors. You can also put reflections on. You can see how you've got reflections on the ground level. Um, and when you're in the realistic mode in the view panel, you've got access to ray tracing. Uh, and if we activate the ray trace just now, it'll go away and it'll start using the environment this part actually lives in just now. So if you've got all these different environments that you can use, so if we use this drop down list, for instance, um, let's just take the ray tracing back off just now. Um, we can go through this list here and we can see that by default, Inventor gives us all these different environments that we can then go and man manipulate. So we can go in and change the lighting. Some of these are really very good if I go into settings just to start off with um, and show you that when you click on each of these, you can see the different environment that they actually live in. So you can see that this one's got some sky and some dark areas. Um, you've got an empty lab and things like that. So if we double click on that, for instance, in the background, we can see that it's starting to load up. Um, if I save and close that and zoom out, you can see that it's actually put your part on some sort of environment which is really quite good. Um, you can copy these as well, and you can make changes to them. So if we go to just one of the default one lighting, you can see if I just zoom in, you can see that it's got a really nice effect. I mean, you've got to ray tracing, you get some reflections and things like that. Um, and you can push these renders out from Inventor as well. And it does look really, really good in the beginning. Um, when you go over from Inventor, to Fusion 360, I don't know if it's just my experience, but it just seems to look so much better in the Fusion 360 environment. So I'm going to upload it just now. I'm going to bring it in as an AnyCAD file format. So what you'll find with Fusion 360 is it's AnyCAD. We can go in and look for files that maybe were originally created inside of Inventor. So I'm going to go and bring in that alignment bracket that we just seen in that environment an inventor so let's just upload that in we can see that it's building up the status so we'll bring that in as well so when we've uploaded it into our folder on the left hand side we'll see access to the alignment bracket um, and then we'll bring it into our design and we'll navigate into the render environment so we can just right click on it just now we'll open it up so it comes in in a different orientation, um, and that's just because it came over from a different package. We can definitely update that and make changes to it inside of Fusion 360 really quickly. So we're just going to go up to the Move tool and move the body. We'll just select the body from here, and we'll just change the pivot to the zero position, and we'll just rotate it around so that we can see it in a better view. OK, so as default, at the moment, the material that will be added to this will be the same one that was added inside Inventor. So if we go up and change the environment from the design environment to the render environment, straight away we're into perspective view. 
So we went from orthographic to perspective view. And now you can see it, it actually looks not too bad just now. There's not much going on in terms of the background. There's nothing really added to it. So we're going to go in and have a quick look from left to right up at the top here in the ribbon. So I'm going to go for appearance first of all. And the very one of the very good things about Fusion 360 is the way that you apply an appearance. Um, it's actually just a drag and drop technique. So we're going to go down and look for, as you can see it in the appearances, you've got lots of different ways to add an appearance. You've got Fusion 360 appearances. You can add in your own appearances from the cloud and you've also got favorites as well. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to look inside the metal folder and I'll go under some steel metals. And you can see you've got lots of different types. You've also got ones that may not necessarily be loaded in. So you'll see on the right hand side here, you've got a small arrow where you can left click and download that material to be used. So if we look for, let's just go for this satin steel material and apply it on just now. You can see how you've got some reflections and things like that on the surfaces. It's starting to look quite good already. And then just as a basic um, start off point, we'll just go in and we'll start using the in canvas render just now so that we can see what it looks like. It will start to use um, the ray tracing in the background and make it look quite nice. So it's, it's actually coming up quite nice just now. It's got some reflections on the ground, it's still a wee bit grainy, but then again, it's using um, the ray tracing in the background and it's, it's going through different iterations at the moment because in canvas render just gives you the ability to look at what it would look like at the moment as you apply these different appearances and environments. So it's basically allowing you to render very fast on the screen. And then once you're fully committed with the appearances and the environment that you like, you can then push it out as a full blown render. And we'll look at that soon. So at the moment, if we leave in canvas on, as you zoom in and out on the part, it's just ray tracing in the background and it's updating as you move it around. So as we move it around, we can see the reflections from the light is bouncing off this material that we've applied to the part. And it's actually looking really good. Um, so if we go up now and let's just take a look at some of the scene settings that we've got. So you can see things like the environment at the top here, we can actually change how bright this environment is by moving the slider. Um, we've also got the position of the light at the moment. So the light's actually shining down from um, from an environment that's been at attached. So what we can do is we can actually we can actually move and rotate that lighting around. So you'll see the shadows changing at the bottom and you'll see the reflections on the part changing as well. And this is all dictated by where your sign, uh, sorry, where your part would be situated in your scene. So if it was near daylight or um, a spotlight or something like that, that will dictate where the light generates from to your material. And we can also reset it back if we make any mistakes. Um, at the moment, it's just a solid background color. And um, we're going to look at environments in a minute. You'll see that you've got the ground plane, which we can put on. We can also uh, flatten ground just means if there's any textures on the ground level, then it'll come through. At the moment, we don't have one. Um, so we'll just turn that off just now. And then we can look at reflections as well. You can see how when you click on reflection, you get um, you get another slider for roughness. So you can basically rough up the reflections at the bottom. And quite quickly, you can start moving and manipulating your part with all these sliders. And, and you can get something that looks really, really nice. Um, let's just take that position off. We've got things like camera position. We can also change the focus of the camera. Um, I would suggest maybe keeping it between 70 and, and maybe 90. Um, if I just put that back to 90. Uh, and then you've got exposure as well. If we just look at the exposure, obviously that's going to be the exposure of the lighting coming in. Um, most of the time, these settings are actually set up for you very quickly and really easily, and you don't need to change the defaults. Um, you've got depth of field that basically allows you to pick a point on the part to focus. You'll see that the focus point just now is this small green dot. We can we can move that to um, another part of the part to focus on. And what that does for us is it basically allows us to put in some sort of blur. If you imagine looking at an image, you want something to stand out, but the background may be 
you want some sort of blur in the background so you can affect the blur in the background by changing this this value here so if i put it down to something quite low um that just means that the background that just means that your focal point will be the thing that your eye is connecting to as soon as you look at the render and everything else in the background is kind of a blurred um, but it's it's almost natural to the eye. It's it's kind of a, what we do naturally when we look at something. We want obviously anything that we render to stand out. We want it to come out of the page, and we want it to be the first thing that we see. And anything else, you know, blurred into the background, and that's what your depth of field will will give you. Um, so at the moment, if we turn off the in canvas, what I want to do in here is I'm actually going to get rid of the settings at the moment and just show you. What you can what you can do and what you can achieve in here by adding just a bit more information so what we can do in here is we can actually go back to the model environment so we go back to design what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to draw if you imagine um whenever you get photos took you you tend to have some sort of booth <laughs> that you, you 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 can stand in um and it, it allows the light to reflect off certain different materials um, and it gives different effect. So if we put this into a different environment, we should be able to achieve some nice lighting around it. At the moment, it doesn't look too great because it's just one material and there isn't really anything bouncing off that material. So what we're gonna do is let's just create something that we can then add some more materials to. So let's just make that slightly bigger actually so it comes off the screen. So if we go back into the render environment now, and we're just moving it around slightly. That's us. So what we can do also is if we go back, let's just move that down. So we go back to design and we'll just move that part down. Just put it in the corner slightly. That's us. And then we'll go back to a render environment. Sorry, that never committed to that there. Let's just go back and sort that out. Right. Let's go back to the home and we'll zoom in here. So what we can do is we can actually add different appearances and we can change the lighting um, in this environment so that we, when we zoom in, we've got something that looks a bit better than what we've got just now. So if we go up and first of all, we'll look at appearance. And what we're going to do is we'll go down in to the different types of appearance that we can add and we'll look for, let's look for a wood. Um, and we'll just, when you're applying appearances within Fusion 360, you've got two options. You can apply it to the body and component, or you can apply it to a face. So I'm going to select the face option and I'm just going to drag and drop on to the face here. And you can see that now we've applied an appearance. I'm also going to go up to paint and I'm going to look for, let's go for the, the glossy white um, paint. And again, I'm going to apply it to a face and I'm just going to drag and drop it onto the face at the back. So we're, we're just trying to put it into an environment and make it look a bit more interesting, guys. So we're just adding different things in here. So we just got an A in Canvas render just now. We'll change the setting. Actually, you've got some settings in here where we can go in and we can change it from advanced. It's actually better when it's on fast because it means it will update. Um, it's looking a bit dark, guys, so what I'm going to do is I'll just go into the settings and I'll brighten it up slightly. And we can also change the position of the lighting. So if we go and change it around just slightly, you can see how you've still got your in canvas on and we're still in this environment and we're changing as we're moving around. So we're just changing the view. We're looking at the part where we're looking at the reflections and things. Maybe there's maybe too much reflection. Um, we, we maybe want to change the, the material on the floor, actually, because it's looking a bit dark with that walnut. So we can go back in and let's just close that off in this scene and go back to the appearance. We can go down to wood and let's just pick something that's a wee bit, um, a wee bit lighter. So we'll just put it on the face. 
I'll just lighten it up a wee bit. So we're just we're just trying to make the environment look a wee bit interesting. We do have some lines in the background there um, where the wall kind of a finishes and it does look really, it, it looks like, like a really sharp line. So we might want to attach some sort of like scratches on the walls or something like that, something to make it a bit darker, which I'm going to show you later on as well. But you can see how you can achieve things in here really quickly. I mean, look, it's actually looking really well just now. This might not be at your final render, but you're definitely getting to that stage where, you know, it's looking really good. The other thing that we can do is we can apply decals to faces. So if we just go up and um, if we go back into our images, um, let's just apply it to this face here. So you can see how this this is actually a drawing that's been done of this part. Um, let's just select something else because it's looking a bit. No, in fact, that's all right. That's all right. It's fine. We'll just rotate it around. We'll put this in canvas off just now so you can see it a bit better. So you can see how we've actually got a drawing. In the background, you can see how the, the drawing's actually attaching onto the wall surface as well. And the main reason for that is this tick box down at the bottom. That's this chain faces. So we're going to untick that and you can see how now we can start just moving the part around. We're, we're making the environment a bit more interesting. Um, we're just using this decal to to edit the environment and make it look a bit better. So you can see how, if we go into end canvas now, we've got something that looks a wee bit nicer. So we're just rendering it up. So you can see the reflection from the actual drawing going up onto the part and giving it some interesting um, interesting um, colours. And, and you can see the drawing, how it's reflected onto the material. So like I say, I'm not by any means perfect at rendering, but really quickly by just adding some very basic techniques in here you can you can really produce something really nice the other thing that you can do is guys if we go and i just want to show you another example i'm just going to stop that just now um i'm just going to show you um some textures that you can actually add so most of the time parts anything that you touch often or anything that kind of a like your material is never going to be perfect on the top um, unless it's been finished specifically. There might be an instance where you want to give something a bit more depth. You want to make it look like it's worn. You you want to make it look like it's been used um, before you start rendering up. And the other thing that you can do within the render environment is when you're adding decals, you can go and look for specific types of decals. So if I look in my decal folder just to show you, um, this is obviously an image of a dice. And let's be honest with you, if you've ever been to a casino or anything, most dice, they're not perfect. The reflection on this just now makes it look very shiny. So what we can do is we can add decals to the faces. So I'm going to go in and, and pick some of these images. And I've only just grabbed these from Google. Um, I went in and looked for some, some scratches. I made sure they were transparent. I've done the same with the rust effect and things like that as well. Um, so. I'm just going to go in and open up this one and select a face. So you can see if I zoom in to this face, it's it's fully um, visible at the moment. We can change the size of it. We can also tell it to be across one face or a chain of faces. And we can rotate the image around. Um, we can pick more faces if we want to apply it to more than one face. But the idea here is that we're given we're given our appearance on the dice a bit more wear so that when we do render it up we're getting better reflections off it we're getting um texture and um we're getting more realistic images from the render so we're adding different technique we're adding different texture sorry to to the appearance so from here i can turn the opacity down slightly so that we can see that it's just going to cause if i say okay that just now you can just see it's, it's maybe still a bit vivid so we can go back in and we can edit the decal at any point and we can take that opacity right down so we're just giving it something that looks a bit more realistic so if we just put the end canvas on just now just to see what it looks like you can see how it's it's given it it's not in the perfect environment just now guys but you can see how it's given that a wee bit more of a realistic view just by adding a decal so you can you can add decals in whether it's from the previous example, whether it was a drawing and you're looking for some refle reflections, 
whether it's scratches and rust and things that affects on your material. You can also adjust the appearance as well. So you can see how the appearances on these actual dots and the dice are very, very shiny. So as the light's coming in and reflecting with them, they're bounce, it's bouncing off and giving you a glossy effect. But really easily, we can we can update that, we can change that in the appearance. So if I go to the glossy effect and edit the material, I can go to um, the advanced settings. And if we go down into the advanced settings for this material, you'll see you've got things like cutouts and reflection bumps and things like that that you can edit. And if we if we go down into, let's just go down and look for, it'll be in the advanced highlights control, yeah. Let's just see if we can find. I'm just going to turn that and canvas off a quick second. I've been in so many materials this morning. Can't find the one I'm looking for. Sorry about this, guys. Yeah, I'll see if I can find it on the other one. I've got it in one of the other examples, but we can go in and we can edit the materials. We can edit the way that they look and the shine that we get off them. We can change it to a, a more smooth shine off it and we can change the reflection of it. We can stop this glossiness from happening. We can change everything um, within the material as well. We can update the material. We can add our own bumps and textures and stuff. You don't necessarily have to add the decal as a texture. We can actually add it in and we can add an image to the material as well. So it's very easy to edit the materials after they've been applied. So it's really all about the materials and the appearances that you use on your part. It's really all about the way that you make changes to the materials and how you then update the material and how you then use that material to view the way the part would look in reality. Okay, so we'll just look at one more example, guys, and then we'll stop for some questions. So if I go back, and I'm just going to show you this model here, which if I open it up, I'm pretty sure some of you will be familiar with this model. So thanks very much, Craig, for this one. Um, I'm sure you're very proud of this model. So I'm going to just move it around, guys, so that we can, we can actually just see it in a better um, orientation. So I'm just going to go and select all the bodies. Let's just pick the components to make sure we don't miss anything. And then I'm going to just pivot that around so that we can see it in a better orientation. Uh, and then we'll go this way by 90 as well so that we've got it here. Perfect. So you can also, you can see just now, just by looking at it, you're getting some reflections off the top of R2's um, headset as well, like here, up at the top. So if we go into the render environment just now, you can see how he doesn't, he doesn't look too great, but we're going to go in and we're just going to go into set, um, scene settings and we'll go into environments. And a bit like the invented environments, we can pick different environments from the list. So I'm going to go for this dry lake bed here. And if I go into the settings, I'm just going to put flat and ground on. Let's put it in canvas on so that we can see where it is. Sorry about that, guys. Um, let me just see if I can get the environment to come on. Just stop the end canvas. Did 
doesn't seem to be bringing in the... I can see that he's there. He should be on the ground level. Ah, it's the position. Let's go into the position and reset that position. Bring the lighting right down. Let's just close that off just now. Go back in and start again. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what's going on with the environment there. Um, we'll just rotate this back round again. All right, back into our render. See if we can get this environment to come up and work for us now. Hopefully it works. That's us. Right, so we're going to put them on the flat ground and we can see that just by adding our material, uh, our environment, we can see the materials reflecting really well. This model's actually came from Inventor, so the materials that are in here are actually Inventor materials that have came through with this model. So as we imported it in, we got some materials that came through with it from Inventor. And all we've done here is inside Fusion 360, we've added an environment. So you can see that you can move them around. We can add some reflections as well if we want. We can make them a bit rougher. But you can see, obviously, he's on the ground level. Um, the environment looks really well, so we can move them around and get some really good renders as we move them. So if I move them into some position so that we can see the background as well and we can get some reflections from them, he's starting to look pretty good. So if we leave it there, we can look at the actual re rendering options within Fusion 360. So we click on the render settings just so that you can see the difference. So you've got lots of dif different custom settings. You can go in and change your aspect ratio, um, you can also pick whether you want to render on the cloud or you want to render locally. So if you render locally, obviously you don't need to have any um, cloud credits. But if you want to use the cloud render, then you have to use your cloud credits. Okay. So you've also got a different quality. So you can either choose standard or final quality. To be honest, there's not much of a big difference between both. If we click on standard just now and we render to the cloud and then click on render, what it does is it'll go down into the render gallery. And once it's complete, it'll tell you at the bottom here that it's completed and then you can view your render. So you've got lots of different ways that you can render within Fusion 360. Um, you can Use your in canvas as you're working through, trying to get your appearances and working on your render, trying to get the right reflections and make it look really realistic. Um, you've also got your in canvas settings where you can go from a fast performance so that you can see the updates happening really quickly. You can make it a bit more advanced. So that's for your in canvas render. And then once you get to your render settings, this is where you come in and you're fully committing to your render here. and you're going through picking what type of render you want, whether it's on the cloud or locally, and then the quality you want as well. Okay, so if we just look down at the bottom here, we can see that our renders actually come up at the bottom down here. So once we click on it, we've got a few different options. We can we can do a turntable in here. We can access different frames if we decide to do a turntable. Um, you can see that you've got options for download. Um, and you can also delete, so you can download it at any point as well. So you can see how it's, it's actually quite 
quite nice. So if we click on download, you can see the different types that you can download it as. So if we go PNG and download it as that, it will start preparing the download and ask if you want to save it. And if we put it on the desktop, let's just show the desktop so that we can see. And we can see that's our render there. There's probably still a lot of things that you might want to do to make your render look a lot better. But you can see using Fusion 360's tools, you can actually start to build up a render really quickly without actually being a specialist. Um, but it's actually quite nice. It's, it's made me start to think about the reflections on most of the parts that I use, um, especially when it's nice and sunny in Scotland today. But you can see how using Fusion 360, you can get some really nice renders. All right. So thanks very much, guys, for spending some time with me um, this morning. I just want to give you a couple of tips um, about whenever you're using the Fusion 360 render. So like I said earlier on, try not to make too many sharp edges. If you really think about your part in reality, there's not a lot of components out there, not a lot of parts out there that have got sharp edges anyway. So try and stay away from sharp edges. Also, when you're using your in-canvas render, try and limit your resolution. It'll render really quick. Add textures like I did previously, scat scratches and dirt and smudges and things like that. Make it real as real as possible. Um, you can also create your own realistic environments um, and you can create your own lighting by adding objects, various different objects. The other thing you can get access to is the environments. So you can get free online environments using the link you can see on the screen just now. So you can get your HDRI maps um, online for free and you can upload them into Fusion 360 quite quickly. Seamless textures as well. You want to make sure that it's not tiled and your textures don't look really bad. There's also a texture tool inside Fusion 360 and you can control it by using the texture map controls as well. All right, so that's just a couple of tips for you. But if you've got any questions, guys, just fire them through. You can also email me after and you can ask any questions then. So I'm hoping you've got some benefit out of this and that you can see that you don't need to be fantastic at rendering to produce something that looks really, really nice. So give it a go, guys. See how he's got on. But I'll keep the call. Um, sorry, I'll keep the webinar open for the next five, ten minutes. And if anybody's got any questions, just feel free to fire them through. All right, and then just to make you aware as well, we do have another webinar um, on the 12th for anyone who's interested in any CAM techniques.